Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. I have a giant challenge wrapped up in one video for you. Tomorrow's my birthday and I wanted to make a birthday dress. So it is cottage core. Just recently figured out what cottage core means. It has a zipper. Hate zippers. It's fully lined. Hate lining. Puffy sleeves, new to sleeves. It actually turned out good. So I'm happy with it. I'm going on a picnic tomorrow, so it's perfect dress for that. I'm so excited. Thanks for being here. And if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Make it a great day. I bought three yards of this flowy, probably polyester, but chiffon like fabric and a matching lining fabric. This is the first time I'm attempting a circle skirt. This is actually a half circle skirt and there's tons of calculators online that you just plug in your waist measurement and it spits out exactly what you need to measure. I'll link the one that I used in the description box below. I doubled over the fabric and painstakingly smoothed out this finicky fabric. Ugh. Gosh, I'm pretty. My waist measurement from the calculator came to about 9.5, so I rounded up to 10. Anchor the point like a compass and pivot to measure. And here's where I made the first mistake. I shouldn't have cut that piece out because I still have to measure the bottom of the skirt using the same method and it kept sliding. This was exhausting, so I took a little nap. Great blanket. The good news is I got to do it all over again on the super slidey fabric. At least this time I learned my lesson from the first one and measured both before cutting. Next, I turned to my dress form to drape the bodice. I'm using everyday items like dry erase board tape and tissue paper and cut away the excess like a serial killer. I'm using a Sharpie to mark the tape lines onto the paper. All I know is I want a square neck cut along the princess seam, which just is the seam that runs down the center of the bust. Before cutting from the fabric, pin the pieces together to make sure it fits. Tape that back together and pin the pieces to the fabric. I've doubled over the fabric so I can cut two pieces at once and the front middle piece will be cut on the fold line. Cut these pieces from both the lining fabric and the outer fabric so in the end you have two full bodices to construct. I'm adding a bust line dart, which I will first sew on the lining fabric. Start with the thicker end and sew towards the thinner end. Once you get a few centimeters from the thinner end, shorten your stitch length and don't backstitch. Tie two square knots instead. Repeat this process on the other side as well as the slippery outer fabric. Next, sew the side pieces to the middle by pinning the right sides together. After sewn, open the seams and iron them flat. With right sides together, face the back pieces to the side pieces and pin along the edges in preparation to sew. Repeat this process on the outer fabric as well. I tried to use clips to see if that would hold it together better but it really just ended up weighing the fabric down and made it slip more. Finally, have two fully constructed bodice pieces from the lining fabric and the outer fabric. With right sides together, face the two shoulder pieces together and pin in preparation to sew. I was so confused as to why my sewing machine wasn't working. Because it wasn't on. Quick tip, if you wanna use your sewing machine, you have to turn it on first. A good thing about using lining fabric, I've been testing everything out on that one first before going to the outer fabric. And look, I've had this sewing machine for over a year and that's the first time I ever figured out that it has a cutter on the side. Now I'm pointing to it. With the shoulder seams now sewn together, I face the bodice pieces right sides together, giving the clips a second chance to prove themselves in life. I start with the shoulder seams to make sure everything lines up correctly before sewing from one end to the other. When you get close to the square portion of the neckline, manually lower your needle into the fabric so that you can lift the presser foot and then pivot the fabric so you get a nice 90 degree angle.
To make it even crisper, snip each of the corners to the stitching line, but not through it. We're going to understitch to make sure that the lining stays in place by folding both of the seam allowances towards the purple lining fabric and stitch along the edge. Once ironed flat, it lays really nicely. Centering the middle of the bodice to the skirt, flip the fabric right sides together and pin the lining skirt to the lining bodice only. And to answer your question, yes, I am wearing unicorn pants. Make sure that the outer fabric is far away while you're sewing up the lining fabric. This gives a professional finish even to the inside of the dress. I serge the raw edges before sewing together the outer skirt to the outer bodice. If you don't have a serger, a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine works just as well. Now that the lining skirt is attached to the lining bodice and the outer skirt is attached to the outer bodice, I need to try to figure out the sleeves. This is the first time that I'm drafting sleeves, so please bear with me. I've lined the back bodice and the front bodice pieces to a sleeve shape, and the further you pull it apart, the puffier the sleeves. I've doubled over the fabric so I can cut them both out at the same time. With right sides together, sew the bottom portion of the sleeve up to the armhole. This fabric frays a lot, so I finished it on my serger or use a zigzag stitch. Fold over the end of the sleeve once to make a channel for the elastic. I've removed the table to my sewing machine so the sleeve fits better. I've made a mistake here, which I will touch on in just a bit. Do you see what it was? I didn't at this point because I was folding it over again to hide the raw edges. So if I've completely closed the channel, I can't get the elastic inside. So I'll need to seam rip about an inch open. My seam ripper just needs to be the star of every project. I've pinned one end of the elastic, seam ripped a hole, and safety pinned the other end of the elastic so it can fit through the channel. Make sure the elastic fits snugly around your arm, but not too tight that it's uncomfortable. When it pokes out the other side, make sure it's not twisted and then you can zigzag stitch them together. Mine turned out real ugly, but it works. Ugh, the other side's even uglier. Let's not look at that. It's gonna be enclosed anyways. Doesn't matter, no one will see it. Now we can sew up that hole that we created for the elastic and pretend that we did it right from the start. To ease the sleeves into the armholes a little easier, I have stitched a basting stitch around the edge. With right sides together, line up the seams and pin in place. Gather or ungather the basting stitch to make sure that it fits correctly inside the armhole. I hope that makes sense. Once it's lined up correctly, sew all pieces together. Then finish on the serger. Again, you can do this as a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Since my serger was hot and ready, I serged individually each side of the back seam in preparation to install the zipper. I'm going to attempt to do the zipper the correct way. Again, I'm baffled as to why my sewing machine isn't starting. Because the foot pedal is not plugged in. What is with me? Change your sewing machine to the longest stitch length possible do not back stitch at the beginning or the end and sew a basting stitch at a half inch seam allowance along the length of the zipper. I've prepped my zipper by ironing it as straight as I can on a low heat. This is an invisible zipper, so using the basting stitch as a guide, flip it over so that the teeth line up with that basting stitch. I am unsuccessfully trying to eyeball where the zipper tape at the top should start. Always measure, always measure. Pin in place to the outer fabric only. I don't have an invisible zipper foot, but I have a zipper foot, so I'm switching out the presser foot for that one. Line it up so that the needle is as close to the zipper teeth as possible, and sew along the length of the zipper. When you get close 
close to the zipper pull, it starts getting difficult, so sew as close as you can. And this is when I realized that eyeballing the top of the zipper tape doesn't work. It was too tall and stuck out above. Again, some quality time with my seam ripper. So I lied. Now I'm gonna start installing the zipper the correct way. This time I'm measuring half an inch down from the top. Repin in place, lining up with the basting stitch again. Again. Moving on to the other side of the zipper, flip the zipper tape so that the teeth line up with the basting stitch and that it's a half an inch down from the top because measuring is fun and easy to do. I should do it more often. Now that we are stitching the other side of the zipper, adjust your zipper foot so that the needle is closest to the teeth along the right. By now, you figured out that measuring is not my friend. In this zipper, it was 22 inches and way too long. So I created a new zipper stop by adding a few zigzag stitches over the teeth. Called up my friend, the seam ripper, so that we could take off the portion of the zipper that was no longer needed. Now to attach the scary lining fabric to the zipper. I've ironed a fold and I'm now lining up that fold to the middle of the zipper. You don't want it too close to the teeth because it'll get caught in the zipper. Make sure that the lining fabric lines up with the outer fabric at the waist seam. In an attempt to finish the top as well, sew along the top while it's right sides together Pivot the fabric and continue sewing along the zipper tape. Readjust the zipper foot and sew up the other side of the lining. This part is tricky too. To finish the hem below the zipper, the zipper tape keeps getting in the way. I sewed as close to the zipper tape as possible and then ended up hand stitching the remaining hole closed, which I think actually turned out nicer because you have better control. Then repeat this process for the lining layer. The hem. I have pinned the lining layer out of the way so I can focus on the outer layer. If you have a friend who help you with this, that's best. Otherwise, you can just look in the mirror and adjust the pins as you see necessary. Try on the dress as much as possible because this is when I found out that the sleeves will not stay on my shoulders. To fix the problem, I sewed a hidden strap with a snap attached to the shoulder that fits around my bra strap to keep it in place. Fun problem solved, and now I'm noticing that I don't like how long the sleeves are. I ended up clipping in place and shortening the sleeves to a much shorter length. Now just to finish the hem, I'll have another video coming out soon with a more in-depth process of how to do this, but the short answer is that I'm making sure the measurements are roughly the same and aren't wildly different. The outer fabric doesn't iron so well, so I did my best, and from that iron fold I'm measuring down half an inch and marking all around with the chalk. Cut off the excess fabric and then take it to the sewing machine. Fold over the fabric so that it meets that iron fold and sew along the edge. The iron fold makes this part a little bit easier because it naturally wants to fold over. So fold it over so that now the ironed hem is at the bottom and then sew once again all along the edge. This will make two lines of stitching on the inside but only one on the outside. Redressing my dress form, I am marking with chalk where the lining fabric sticks out below the outer fabric. I want the lining fabric to be about an inch shorter than the outer fabric so you can see the pretty sheer fabric. Since this is the lining fabric, we don't have to be quite as precise as the outside fabric so you can do a standard rolled hem by folding over twice and sewing. And that's the last step. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a cottagecore-esque birthday dress. 
Please subscribe to my channel for future DIY tutorials and enjoy the final product. Yay!